So what are the three most common problems when setting up your Garmin unit? Number one is properly setting a waypoint. You got to know how to do that. Number two is not being afraid to turn your contrast and your brightness way up. You can leave them in auto, but it's not going to give you that really image-like picture. And number three is trying to look too far out or too far down in clear view and side view in those higher frequencies. Remember, the higher the frequency, the less distance you can cover. So we're going to go ahead and go over all three of those and stay till the end of the video and I'll show you how to get some cheat sheets if you're a new Garmin user for your initial Garmin setup that'll help you dial that image in. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so first things first, let's take a look at how to set a waypoint. Now there's two different ways. If you look down here, you got a pause button and we can pause it. And you see these crosshairs come up. So what you can do is take your finger and just move it to the object that you want to mark. And then you got an inverted teardrop up here. Go ahead and press that. And it says waypoint created at cursor. Now that's important. Remember to look at that at the top of the screen. Now the other thing you want to remember, let's go back, is don't mark your waypoint with just one crosshair, with just this down crosshair. Because watch when I, when I mark this. Okay, it's going to show us at a depth of 3.3 feet. And that's not necessarily what we want. We want to know how deep it was when we go back. So press down there towards the bottom. Like if you want to be right on the bottom. And then when you press it, now it's 24.2 feet deep. So that's a good thing to do. Now the other way you can do it, is let's go ahead and hit play, is if you're going along and you see something right here, it happens to catch your eye, you can swipe the screen and you can pause it that way. See, it's got the play button down here. And then you can go back a little ways and look for something that maybe you wanted to mark that you didn't see. And you can go ahead and mark that waypoint. Now, here's one other thing. Notice that's just a gray dot. You can edit that by symbol, and you have all these different symbols. But here's the thing, when I'm going along and I'm just looking at, when I'm going along and just looking at the lake, I'm not necessarily gonna put like a hump or a tree brush or whatever it is sometimes. Sometimes I'll just run along and I'll mark a bunch of different places. And then if I decide that I like them, I'll go back later and put symbols in them and name them and do all that kind of stuff. Depends on how many you mark and how you fish. But you can always go through and if you want to get rid of all the ones that you didn't use, and you can sort them by that gray dot. So anyway, let's go through this one more time. We can pause the screen, swipe, go back, set the crosshairs where I want it, and then hit the teardrop, waypoint created at cursor. Now here's the big mistake that most people make. Let's go ahead and start that again. Is they'll be running along and they'll say, oh wow, look at that right there, I wanna mark that. There's a mark button down here at the bottom. If you hit that mark button, look here, waypoint created at boat. So what that did, that created a waypoint where your boat is. So let's take a look at that. Now what it does, it gives you the maximum depth there. So that's what mistake most people make is they hit that mark button instead of pausing and hitting the teardrop. All right. Now every time I did that, I created a waypoint. So I'll have to go back and delete all those. <laughs> All right, so next thing is contrast. Let's take a look at that. So if you go to menu, you got your contrast and your brightness. Now your brightness is always gonna revert back to the auto. So go into your brightness, just get in the habit of doing it. And once you move this, it puts it in manual. And I start out about 90% most of the time. Now realize 
that this is a simulator, so it's, it's going to be a little more drastic when you're out on the lake. Okay, so then you hit done, hit menu again, and you can go to your contrast, and same thing there. Now, what a lot of people will do is they'll go to default, and default sometimes makes it kind of dim. So I like to push that up close to 90%. What I'm looking for, I want to make these dots glow. And if you go especially down here, see how those start to disappear? My rule of thumb is I don't mind having a little bit of clutter on the screen. So I'll turn it up a little farther than I think I need it at times. Now you also might notice I've got my brightness up here on the screen where I can touch it and turn it up and I can adjust my depth with the plus and minus buttons. So this will default to range, which is a duplicate of what these two buttons do. So if you want to change that, go to menu, sonar setup, and on-screen control. And you can see you can go range or brightness. So I leave mine on brightness, that way I've got both of them up there and I don't have to go into this menu to change it. All right, so the next thing we run into is, let's go ahead and go to our, let's go home, go to our side view. And on side view, I normally set mine at 70 foot either side and that's because I run a GT54. If you go way out, and remember this is a simulator, so when you go way out on the simulator, see that black out here? Now that's just because it, it is a simulator, but what'll happen on the water, if you're running say 1120 hertz, it'll start blacking out on the edges because it doesn't have enough power to go ahead and shoot the sonar out that far. And 70 foot generally is pretty good at about 30 foot of water, and you can stretch that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the simulator off right quick. Go home, go settings, system, simulator, and turn that off because it won't give you the frequency in the simulator. Go sonar, side view, and I've got my transmission disabled, so I'm not hurting my transducer. Go menu, and you can see the frequency up here. Now again, this is a GT54 I have plugged into this unit, so I've only got two choices. I got 455 and 1120. Now the 455 is plenty capable, and to be honest with you, most of the time I just run the 455, and then if I see that I really want to get tuned into something, like if I run across and I see a culvert or something like that that I really want to look at, then I'll come in here and I'll go ahead and change this frequency back to 1120, and that really helps. And But I know when I'm doing that, I'm zooming in on just one section. So I can go ahead, when I'm in 1120, I can go ahead and just really tighten that up and go into, say, 50 foot, and just run alongside of it. So that's kind of what that's for. Let's take a look at that with the simulator on. So if I was running at 1120, I would probably go ahead, hit my plus button and tighten that up to around 50. That way I'm really, I can really zoom in on that. See there? Get rid of that box. And here's a bonus tip for you. So one of the other big things that happens and normally in side view is you see how I did that? How I pulled that box up? That's a zoom feature. So let's take a look at our zoom and if you turn the auto on and the manual and the split zoom and all that in side view, it can really throw you for a loop. So what I do, I only turn the magnify on 
and I set it at about two. And then that gives me that zoom box if I want it. You just pinch it down if you want to get rid of it. Take two fingers, pull it up. There you go. So there you go. There's a bonus tip for you. So you can imagine with over 10,000 video subscribers and 4,000 newsletter subscribers, I get a lot of feedback. So I hope these tips are useful to you. And as I promised, if you want some cheat sheets for an initial Garmin setup, and they're my settings, so they might not work in the ocean and other places, there's a link down in the description that'll take you to a landing page for my newsletter. And when you sign up for the newsletter, it will send you a welcome email that has all the links to the different spreadsheets that you can get. Now remember, these spreadsheets are for the UHD and the Ultra Series, but not the two, okay? So if you've got one of the new UHD 2s or Ultra 2s, they're a different file structure and not saying that they won't work, but they're not gonna be in the same structure. Anyway, Sign up for that, download them, or email me at doubletfishing at outlook.com, and I'll sign you up for the email and go ahead and send you the spreadsheets. Just let me know which model you have. Until next time, keep calm and hook them, and watch this video next. Mm -hmm.